hey guys, Charlie here. I'm doing another tutorial. Uh, I've made some lightsaber VFX for an upcoming short film that I'm doing. Uh, and I just wanted to show you how to do it because I, I really like the look of this. This is, you know, I'm, I'm proudest of my lightsabers at the moment in terms of VFX because I think they look so nice. They feel very real. And I was, you know, I've got some feedback from other people saying that they look real, you know, like they look like they would in real life and it's quite simple to make it look like how it is um i'm going to be using some plugins but i'll show you a little bit on how to do it without plugins the classic the old-fashioned way that everyone knows uh there's a lot of layers here these are all um the layers as you can see it's this is certainly not a uh, um a tutorial for someone completely new. Certainly not. So let's get started, shall we? I'll make a new comp. Uh, I'm going to make it out of the footage, which is this. Uh, as you can see, shot in some evening with is a custom lightsaber. Uh, let me try and get a frame where it isn't blurred. Custom lightsaber. It's not. It's not anything special. That's a Darth Vader replica. Um. Pushing a little bit too hard on the Darth Vader replica. Look at that bend. Mm -mm, not having that. Uh, so we'll start a new comp. Uh, and obviously for massive cinematic effect. Change that. Ooh, no, don't change that yet. Unlock. Change that to 800. Bam. You got yourself your uh, cinemascope bars. Just like that. The reason I love doing that is because if you find a place that you can, you know, you can't quite see enough. You just move it down. You got a lot of space to play with. And I like that a lot. Also means less rotoscoping. Uh, okay, so, new solid. This is the old fashioned way. Essentially, you go to a frame with a lightsaber. So let's go for, let's go for one where there's like lightsaber in shot and no other rotoscoping to be done. Literally, draw a point around every corner of the lightsaber there. Uh, and then obviously go into mask path. There it is. And frame by frame, move this to follow the lightsaber. Obviously I'm doing this really, really quickly because this isn't the, the method I'm going to be properly showing you. But as you can see, that's that. So now you got a white solid for those three frames alone. Uh, obviously, you track your entire footage, but I can't be asked. Um, and then what you want to do, you want to go into blur, 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 and you do Gaussian blur. You're going to copy and paste your solid four times, I like to do. On your bottom one, throw on a Gaussian blur. Throw it on to, uh, uh, pfft, let's try 60. On the second one, throw it on. 30 on the third one throw it on 15 and on the top one throw it on five there you got a glow um now what you want to do add a black solid just like that put it underneath all of them pre-compose this and now turn this to screen and now you can go into uh, color, what is it, color, I have to spell color wrong, because, uh, because of you guys over in America, color balance, throw that on, adjust your shadow a little bit, not too much, adjust your midtones, uh, and your highlights also need to be adjusted, preserve luminosity, and if you want it to be even more over the top, throw it on add, there you go, makes it a lot more contrasty. So essentially that's the basics of classic lightsabers that everyone used to do back in the day. But now our good boy over at Video Copilot, Andrew Kramer, has gone ahead and made ourselves a plugin called Saber. Oh, no, nope, it's crashed. <laughs> anyway, let's try again. So I'm going to be using Video Copilot's Saber that Andrew Kramer has toiled on uh, and made. And it's an incredible plugin, actually. I'm really, really impressed with it. Uh, it's free, completely free to download. 
But I know obviously at places like school or college or university or whatever you want to call it, or even in like public editing bays or in your workplace, you might not be able to install plugins, which is, you know, bit poopy. But here we are, lightsabers. So we're going to use the default, uh, the default preset, but you might want to check some of the other ones out because you might find some good lightsabers in there, you know? Uh, neon looks really nice. It's a really nice one, uh, but there's a lot of good plugins. This this is really useful for not just lightsabers, but for a lot of things. Really, you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. So make sure you check out this plugin 100%. Uh, so I'm gonna use the default. We're gonna set it to screen again, or even add. I might set it to add. I quite like that. That's a look that not many people do, but I like to do. This is a really fat lightsaber, I will say. Um, so we're gonna. Bump up the core size to the same size as the lightsaber, which is about there for me, which, as I say, this is a really fat lightsaber. But if obviously if you're on, like, this replica, that's very chunky. That's not the, the correct size. The correct size for that would probably be probably about there. That's a pretty good size. So I'm going to edit this now that we've lined up. So essentially, keyframe... Uh, Toggle keyframes for both your core start and core end. And go frame by frame. Doing your thing. Moving your points. You only have to worry about two points this way. Uh, there is a way to do it with two points on masking your solids. And I have sometimes... Whoa. I have sometimes used that. Uh, it's essentially using a stroke method. I'm sure you'll find it somewhere online. I didn't disable glow. Just so that I can see a little bit better. Obviously, Sabre also creates the drag for you, which is fantastic because the only way you can manage that with masks is if you're studying lightsabers and know exactly how they move or if you use force motion blur, uh, which can sometimes yield some pretty bad results, I must say, for a lightsaber video. So essentially, we're just going to go frame by frame, as I say. Obviously, you'd do it all the way to the end, but I'm just going to do a couple couple little little things here and there. I'm also going to talk about the clashing of the lightsabers as well and how you can make that. So, there we go. That's all I'll do for now. So, I'm going to hit B. Nope. N. I always get them mixed up. And B at the start there. B for beginning. N for end. I guess. Uh, turn on glow again. There you go. Simple lightsaber. Obviously, I've got really shaky footage and my shutter angle, shutter, shutter angle, shutter speed is incredibly different. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the comp settings here, composition settings, go into advanced, and you have your shutter angle here. You can find, if you search on Google, uh, if you search on Google, um, shutter speed to shutter angle calculator, you will be able to find a good few, uh, which I I found one with a chart. I'll try and find it for you. Uh, maybe it's this one. Yeah, here we go. So this one, uh, Pro Video Coalition, they do have a handy cheat sheet here, as they say. Make sure to use that. So I was shooting in 148, so 180. Uh, so what you're gonna do? On motion blur, change the composition. There you go. Now follow your compositions, motion blur. Which, uh, you know, looks a bit shit for this, you know. So now, simply, what we're going to do, what I like to do at least, this one is where it gets a little bit less free. Although I'll try and replicate it with the, the base stuff. Get a new black solid. Um, throw on optical flares by the boys at Video Copilot, obviously. Uh, and pull out your JJ. Come on, guys. We all know JJ's the best. Got your JJ. Turn the scale up to 1,150 and the brightness up to 1,230. And you've remade Star Trek. I'm only joking, of course. You want your scale to be pretty big, uh, probably about 110, but you want your brightness to be very, very low. and you can go in, have a little tweak of your settings. So I like to get rid of some of this, some of this 
some of this crap here. Uh, what don't we need? We don't need all these um, these little irises, the big ones, these these bad boys here. There you go. I'd probably take it to about there. That's fine by me. I like some of this grain and stuff. I also sometimes throw on some lens orbs, but that might be a little bit over the top. We can check either way. So you want to bop the position on the base of the lightsaber. Zing, just like that. And now we're going to do some expressions, boys. Going to scroll into here. Twirl that open as well. So we're going to alt click the stopwatch of the position X, Y. We're going to click the little pick whip here. Looks like a snail shell. We're going to drag it down. And we're going to find the core start. Tick that there. There you go. There's your expression. Now I'll follow the core start. So that's nice as well. Okay, now we're going to adjust color. Use the tint option. So you want to find, you know, the same sort of color as your lightsaber. I'm going to also change the brightness down again. But, you know, work with scale. And if that, if you're, if you're finding like the streaks or whatever, holy shit. If you're finding the streaks or whatever are a little bit too, too sharp, throw a blur on it. That's what I sometimes do. Simple Gaussian blur or fast blur. Do they still have that? No. Oh, fast blur. Oh yeah, they do. There you go. Fast blur. Toss that on. Just throw a little bit of that on. Make it blend in a little bit more. This is obviously very over stylized, but these are very bright sticks of light and it will affect the camera lens. It just will. That's just how it works. So you want to now do the exact same for the other lightsaber and obviously keyframe your start and end. I keep moving layers by accident. I'm an amateur. I'm an amateur. Mine's obviously very rough. I would hope that you guys would do that better. Uh, another black solid. Without saber. I keep copy pasting because I'm lazy. Uh, get your optical flares back out again. Bada bing. Bada boom. Get your JJ out yet again. Here we go. Uh, we're going to go to light JJ. Uh, I'm just going to leave all the shit in there just because I can't be bothered to do it. But obviously if you want to do the same again, do the same again. Or you could quite simply... Just copy and paste your lens flare layer from the previous one above this and tint it red and change the change the expression here and change it to the other one. That's looking pretty good to me. Um, if you want some additional motion blur uh, onto them, like if you want to show, throw, throw some more on, you can toss some force, force motion blur onto your lightsaber layers, just like that. And it will use the composition's motion blur settings um, by default. So that adds a little bit of the motion blur in without this crazy drag coming off saber. This is a really short clip, but obviously, as you can see, it works a treat. Okay, so now we need some clashing. So I'm going to, I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to import some sparks. I already have them here. Firecracker one is the one that I used here. I'm going to put it in between the two layers. This is uh, the initial impact spark. So that's as soon as they clash, but obviously we didn't animate that part. So it'd be back here somewhere. Where is it? Uh, yeah, so as soon as the lightsaber's touched, you throw on one of those sparks. And that's good. Um, and then I put on another spark. Set of sparks here. This one's very close up. Uh, so I set that to add. Add blend mode. I like using add. It's very over the top. I like it. And I also threw on a tint. No, I didn't. A CC toner and color corrected the mid-tones to a nice purple because that's the two colors clashing and then i simply animated position to follow the two lightsabers 
meeting points, if you will. Just going two frames by two frames every time. And then I added a circular mask, clips mask. Just by double clicking that tool, you can get a perfect clips around your frame. Probably feather by about seven, just so that it fades off the screen there, as opposed to just literally disappearing. Even you could go further. If you don't want to reveal those edges, you could probably tweak the mask a little bit, and that might make it a little bit better as well. And then I think I added a little bit of blur, fast blur again, or Gaussian blur, whichever version you're using. Uh, fast blur again, just so that it wasn't so intense. There you go. Uh, and I, I think I also scaled it down. So there you go, that's a little subtle bit. You can't even see it in that, but there are sparks coming off. And uh, if you're using your example, then you'll be able to see that. Um, so that's that. Uh, you can add some kind of heat distortion if you're fancying it. Uh, I'll show you a quick way of doing that. Just simply an adjustment layer. Mask around your clash point. Hop in here, type turbulent displace, drag and drop that on there. Not too much on the old amount, because otherwise you get that. Just a little bit there and there. You change your size down to nice and low. Evolution, I'll click the stopwatch, type time, and then times, which is an asterisk, and then a number depending on the speed. So if I did 10, for example, uh, you can't even see it, but you know, if you, if you look at yours, you're just gonna need to experiment a little bit. Um, so that mask, you're simply gonna move the mask path to follow this center point. Simple as that. Um, I'm gonna turn it up so that you can see it a little bit. Turn up the amount and size, but I don't do that in yours. This is just to show you, and I'm gonna also change to about 50. That way it's moving nice and quickly as it goes along. You can see that there. A little bit of distortion there. And depending on how smooth your footage is, you might need to do a little feather of probably about five maybe. You don't want to do too much because the feather, it doesn't feather out the the distortion, it feathers out the layer. So you will get some fading going on, like ghosting. But you can kind of see what that's doing. There you go. But obviously that's incredibly over the top. I'd set my amount to probably about probably about 85 and my scale I'd set it very low, the size very low because then you get jittering. Uh but it it, it depends on your footage really, uh mostly. So yeah, there's that. So that's pretty much all that's good in the hood. Uh that's exactly how you make it. Uh, I've done some color grading on top with Filmrite's LUT pack and, you know, bit of curves and stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned some, and hope you make some really good lightsabers. And I will see you next time. Hey.